Oh, finally. Just got home from a long day. Time to scroll through Reddit. No, shit. I've been seeing it everywhere. I'll just close this. <laughs> Please, no more Among Us. No matter where I go, it's everywhere. YouTube, Reddit, Instagram. At least I can get away on my Discord. No. 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 <laughs> Stop. I need to get away from all this. I'll just go on my Switch and... <laughs> Please, no. Just, just get it away. Oh, I could play this game. That looks fun. Oh, no. It's... It's just more Among Us. Psych. Yeah, so I've been seeing a lot of people compare Genosia with Among Us, but they're not actually that similar. A much more apt comparison would be to Werewolf or Mafia, but you play with AI instead of other people, which is great if you don't have any friends, like yours truly. There are a set amount of bad guys, referred to as Genosia, and everyone gets together to discuss who they think the Genosia are and vote a single person into cold sleep, removing them from the game. Then at night, the Genosia get to kill a single person. This goes on until there are no Genosia left, or till they outnumber the humans. There are also special roles doled out at random to the crew. Obviously there's the Genosia, who know who the other Genosia are, and can pretend that they have other roles, such as the Engineer, who can investigate a single person each night to see if they are human. There's a bug, who wins if he survives after a winner is declared, and can also pose as different roles, but if investigated by the engineer, instantly dies. Next we have the doctor, who can see if the person who was voted off the previous round was Genosia or not. The guardian angel can pick a single person each round to protect from Genosia attacks. The guards, two characters who are guaranteed to be crew, and finally the AG supporter. Pretty much the imposter, except they're actually meant to throw. Now for the setup. You are on a ship full of people escaping from a planet and know that a few of you have been infected with this thing called Genosia. It's unclear exactly what it is as well as why it's attacking you. You quickly find out that yourself and Setsu, another passenger, will continue to reset over and over, even after successfully eliminating all the Genosia. So you must continue these loops, even becoming the Genosia yourself, until you gain enough information to find out what's going on. Each crew member has different stats and abilities they can use in dialogue that stay the same through the loops, unlike yours, which level up from replaying the game, and acquire abilities from leveling up certain stats and completing story moments. Every game starts with a vote to put someone into cold sleep, taking them out of the game which at this point in the round is really just a guessing game, as there isn't any evidence to go off of yet. Then it proceeds to the afternoon, where you can pick someone to hang out with, cementing your positions with other crewmates, or, if you're lucky, you'll visit someone and they'll have a story moment, where you will learn more about them or progress the story. Then at night, the Genosia picks someone to kill and both Engineer and Guardian Angel get to choose who to use their ability on. Then, the process repeats until there is a winner. The meat of the game is spent in the discussion room, deciding who to vote into cold sleep. Each round has five discussion points, each new action taking one up. For example, if I thought Setsu was Genosia, I would state that I doubt her. People would say if they agree or disagree, and Setsu can use an ability to either retaliate, shifting the blame onto me, or regret, which makes people feel sorry for her. And that would be one discussion point. Crew members can also take actions like forming alliances or announcing their role to take up a point. This is a good system. The AI does a really good job reacting realistically. It only really felt like I was playing against AI by the end of the game when I had learned all their patterns and voice lines. But before then, it's great. They'll call you out for blaming too much. If the person who accused you the previous round dies, they'll assume you killed them. If crew members defend each other, the AI will pick up on it and account for the potential of them both being Genosia. But unfortunately, there are downsides. 
Arguing with artificial intelligence just isn't the same as with other people. Sometimes you'll have figured out who the Genosia is, but the only accusation you can perform is tapping the doubt button. And sometimes nothing you can do is enough to persuade the rest of the crew. Where in Werewolf or Among Us, you can really lay into your argument as you're talking to real people. You guys are so fucking dumb! You're so dumb! I don't want to play with you guys! This is especially true in the early game, when the rest of the crew have abilities and stats that simply overpower your own. The first round is also kind of pointless. You see at this point there have been no murders, and the engineers haven't investigated anyone yet, so there's no evidence to go off. It's purely guesswork. And with the way stats work, certain crewmates are always targeted the first round, as their stats for avoiding accusation are low. And seeing there is no evidence prosecuting anyone, the AI defaults to accusing the people with the lowest evasion stats. I think it would have been a good idea to let a night go by without vote. This way the Genosia would get a kill in, and the engineer would have at least the chance to investigate someone. This way the first vote would at least have something to go off, instead of just being a guessing game. Next, uh, the abilities. They're broken. The main problem with them is that they have unlimited usage, so there is no strategy while making use of them. They are objectively the right choice in every situation. Why doubt someone when you could use Seek Agreement instead, which rises the rate of people listening to you? Why use Deny when you could use Regret, which makes other crewmates sympathize with you? There is no reason, it's just better. This becomes doubly annoying in the early game when you are the only one without these abilities, and just makes the game boring when you've acquired them all, as you can just spam them over and over, and it just works. It's so bad that by the late game you can accuse whoever you want for no discernible reason and defend yourself flawlessly. A good change would have been to make these abilities more effective, but only have them usable once every game. This way you'd actually have to think about when to use them, instead of them being the go-to in every situation. Another downside is that you'll find yourself in the mindset of exploiting the AI, instead of the actual crewmates. Plus, with the limited amount of sleuthing you can do in these 10-ish minute rounds, it's much easier to learn ways to beat the AI than figure out who the Genosia is through typical means. Granted, you could argue that this is the point. You are canonically repeating the same few days, so it makes sense in-game that you would be exploiting your extended knowledge of people, but it never felt like I exploited people with knowledge I gained about them. More like, I learned how to get the AI to vote for who I wanted them to. Which is really too bad. It would have been cool if you could have threatened other people's secrets and dark pasts that you learnt from looping to blackmailing them into teaming up with you. But alas, not too big of a problem. Okay, so I don't have a clue why this happens, but sometimes a crew member who hasn't been mentioned a single time in the entire discussion will get a massive amount of votes and sometimes even voted out. I'm guessing they have something happen to them which makes the AI more likely to vote for them, but I never really caught on to what that is. Anyway, one thing this game nails is the endgame Genosia attacks. Just when you think you've successfully dealt with all your enemies and your friend is congratulating you, they suddenly turn on you in very unsettling ways. This is especially effective in the first few rounds, when you're still learning what's going on. It's too bad they couldn't have done a similar thing when you are killed midway through the game. As it is, your screen just goes red and you're told that you were attacked by Genosia, which, needless to say, isn't too interesting. The story is also very well done. And don't worry, I won't be going into spoilers in this video, but at the time of recording, I am currently in the process of making another video explaining the entire plot of this complex game. So, if you want to be notified when that video comes out, hey, maybe you could subscribe. But anyway, for one, the setting is great for powerful story moments. Having it be a loop where only you and one other character knows what's going on, lets the story have characters nobly sacrifice themselves for the rest of their friends or have someone go on a killing spree, 
but the story doesn't actually have to sacrifice the characters as they just come back the next loop. The characters definitely start really weird, but they grow on you, or at least they certainly did for me. I thought there was no way I'd get attached to any of these characters, but I was undoubtedly very sad to see them go after the credits rolled. But not only was I sad to leave the characters, I had a hard time leaving the whole story. There are some phenomenal reveals. I won't spoil any of them, of course, as you should experience them yourself. But many details you took for granted will take on entirely new meanings, in very unexpected, yet still logical ways. The ending does a phenomenal job at tying everything together, bringing plot tangents from other characters that you thought were completely unrelated and tying them into a nice knot. My only complaint being that some characters just don't get that treatment and have their stories stay unrelated to the main plot while it's still being required to discover. Unfortunately, they did miss a pretty big opportunity with integrating personality traits into gameplay. Take Kukushka, for example. She is a mute, so I thought they were going to do something creative, maybe have her be really intelligent, but have a hard time getting her points across, as nobody would notice her over the arguing. Uh, but no, they just have her do signals, and then explain exactly what those signals mean. There's a similar problem with looping, as it is used to advance the plot, but unfortunately never to enhance gameplay, which is a real missed opportunity. I was hoping you would be able to use and exploit information about characters you learnt from looping, but this never happened. And even without that, while yes, some crewmates' backstories are integral to the plot, there are also plenty of characters whose stories have absolutely nothing to do with the overarching plot, but you still have to learn them all to advance the story. This game took me about a dozen hours to beat, and I think I would have liked it to be a bit shorter. This problem would be much less significant if I wasn't reviewing the game, but I was, and the werewolf concept got boring to me after playing it for 10 hours, especially when you are blatantly overpowered as I mentioned earlier. I ended up spending the last few hours of the game repeating loops, guessing for the right conditions for a story moment to occur, while spamming through discussions. I think they should have shortened up the time between story events, especially near the end but it seems the developers wanted to appeal to more hardcore fans that really loved the gameplay loop than to people with a minor interest in the game, which there's no inherent flaw in. In fact, I commend them for not just appealing to the masses. But personally, I was certainly losing interest in the discussions by the end of the game. But hey, maybe this game's just not for me. Anyway, the music is decent, certainly shining during more tense and creepy moments than happy ones. And there's no voice acting, which is totally fine, I'm just pointing it out. Oh, and for all of you with Joy-Con Drift, beware. Many mistakes will be made if you have any at all, which of course is totally not the game's fault. Just a warning. So, if the gameplay loop sounds interesting to you, and you'd like a game with a complex narrative, look no further than Genosia. With an abundance of great characters, great reveals, and great lore but be ready for some grinding. Personally, I love this game, but will I be replaying it anytime soon? Probably not. Thanks for watching.